Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be telling you guys the common mistakes that you should be avoiding while filling your ERAS application and also throughout math season. Number one, dealing with red flags. Before I jump into dealing with red flags, let me tell you what are things that are considered potential red flags. Number one, gaps in your application. Number two, a failed USMLE attempt. Number three, not having US clinical experience. Number four, having a high year of graduation. Now the reason why I mentioned it as potential red flags is because these things are not strict red flags. There are some programs that may use this as a criteria to filter its applicants, but there are many programs programs that do a holistic review and are open to accepting and even interviewing applicants regardless of these red flags. So here's something that you can do to address red flags on your application. Firstly, I'd say it's very important to address these things on your application. Like let's say for example, you failed step one for the first time and passed it on the second attempt. You either mention that on your application and keep, keep saying how you may not be a good test taker, maybe you were not able to manage your time efficiently, or maybe you were not feeling well on the day of the exam and n number of things. But honestly, that's not going to help you. So instead of justifying it, just address it in one line and, and speak about what it taught you and how it has changed you as a person. Because honestly, everyone's going to face failures and setbacks. But your attitude towards that and the growth that you have shown from that setback is something that will definitely help you stand out. So please, please, please don't focus on your negatives. Even if it's a red flag, address it and speak about your strengths. That is what you've learned, how you dealt with it and how all all these experiences make you a stronger candidate. I also have a video with a program director who has spoken about red flags, lower scores and other things that program directors look for on a residency application. So make sure you check that out. Number two, lying on your CV. Honestly, like a lot of y'all had asked me this before, if y'all are supposed to submit any kind of proof in form of a certificate or something to residency programs to show them that you volunteered at a particular place. But honestly, you don't have to do that. But at the same time, please do not lie on your CV. The reason why I'm saying this is that you may feel like they won't find out, but program directors are extremely experienced people. So they can easily figure things out. Because say you wrote something amazing on your CV, but then when they interview you and you're not able to explain that experience, then it's very easy for them to find out that you were not saying the truth and them not being able to trust you will be a huge issue because they need people whom they can trust trust and work with in future right so be true to yourself even from an ethical standpoint i feel it's not good to lie on your cv so so just be honest don't undersell yourself and at the same time don't sound too cocky as well so make sure you know how to strike that balance when you're filling in your application another mistake that people commonly make is not getting their application reviewed by others if you're applying for the match this year just uh, know that there's a lot of writing that you're supposed to do you'll be writing your personal statement you'll be writing your cv CV and there will be multiple drafts of your personal statement and CV as in when you review them. So now when you're writing your CV or your personal statement, it may sound really good to you, but it's always advisable to get someone else's opinion as well. You can maybe ask someone whom you know or someone who doesn't know you at all so that they can give you like a very honest and unbiased opinion. There are companies that do this, but there are also some wonderful doctors on Twitter who do this for free as well. So you can like reach out to people and try to get their opinion. Also, another important thing is grammatical and spelling mistakes. So be very, very careful. Personally, I use Grammarly, which is like free of cost. You can just like go to their website and type your things out there and it'll tell you if there are any errors or not. So that's something that I highly recommend. And also one more thing that I want to tell you guys is that while you're getting your application reviewed, make sure you don't lose that personal and authentic touch of it because ultimately it has to align with what you want to say and the message you want to put out to programs. You can obviously take opinions but ultimately trust your gut. Number four, another mistake that people may make is missing deadlines. So now there are a lot of important dates for March 2023. You have like date when the season starts, the date when you can start filling in supplemental, the date when you have to submit supplemental, the dates for ECFMG certification deadline. There are like so many dates. So I have made a separate video about all the important dates, important documents, deadlines, and the things that you can be doing right now to prepare for March 2023. So make sure you check that out and make so that you don't miss any of those deadlines another mistake that i've seen people make 
is applying to programs that may not accept their application. Now, let me tell you what this means. Like we as international med grads may tend to apply to programs that are IMG friendly. But there is one thing that you're supposed to notice is that you have IMGs that require a visa and you also have IMGs that do not require a visa. So if a program is IMG friendly and they do not sponsor a visa and you're someone who requires a visa, then there's no point applying to that program because they're just going to filter your application out even if your application is amazing because ultimately they can't sponsor a visa and it's not going to work out right so be very very careful like last year i remember there were a lot of visa requiring imgs who applied to like this one particular program in new york because it was img friendly but a lot of them got rejected at the same time because that program did not sponsor a visa so this is something that you definitely have to keep in mind again i have like an entire video about how to apply to programs how to use different resources like match resident frida and residency explorer and the things that i did to create my list so you can go and check that out if you need some help with applying to residency programs. The next mistake is with respect to interviews. The most common advice that I received for interview prep was be yourself. Now honestly I will agree with this but I'd say that you have to be a more polished version of yourself. Now what do I mean by this? If I really have to be myself, I'm probably going to end up using slangs. I may end up rambling for a lot of time and I may even end up saying something sarcastic, which was probably funny in my head. But on interview day, I can't be doing all this, right? So my advice for you is that while preparing for interviews, prepare in such a way that your answers are to the point, which means that your answers should not be more than 90 to 120 seconds long. On interview day, avoid using colloquial language and show them the best version version of yourself. While preparing for interviews, you can go through this list of commonly asked interview questions. There may be things like tell me about yourself, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, why this program, describe yourself in three words, how would your friends describe you, tell me more about this clinical rotation that you did and all of these things. There is like a huge list of all these things. I will link that in the description so that you can go and check that out. So go through all these questions and, and try to come up with answers. Now personally, I did not write paragraphs for each of them I just made like bullet points and those were just points of the things that I wanted to cover in my answer because if you're gonna write paragraphs subconsciously you may use it as a script and it can be like very evident when you're speaking to people because it'll sound very mechanic and it wouldn't sound like you're speaking naturally so I'd say ultimately write down points and try to look comfortable while you're speaking you can also have like mock interviews with your friends or maybe with other people online so that you can see how you respond and how you're able to think spontaneously when you're put in that situation. Next, asking the what are my chances question. Now, so if you're on Reddit for the USMLE, I'm pretty sure you would have come across a lot of posts that, that mention a person's scores, their USEE, LOR, zero graduation and things like that. And they ask everyone else to see what their chances of matching are. Like I can completely understand where they're coming from and obviously like there's so much uncertainty involved in this process and getting some reassurance may make people feel better. But to tell you the truth, no one knows what your chances are because when you think about it, your application has a lot of objective things and it also has a lot of subjective things. Like for example, your scores are objective, your year of graduation is objective, but there are so many subjective things like the strength of your LORs, the quality of your personal statement, the things that your university has said about you on your MSPE. These are very subjective, right? Like, and above all, you also have interview performance, communication skills, how well you're able to connect with the people who are interviewing you. There are so many things involved. So that's the reason why there are people with like 260s who go unmatched and there are also people past USMLE only on like their second attempt but they've still matched. So it isn't really black and white. There's like a lot of grey and that's where holistic review comes into play. So I'd say take everything with a pinch of salt. No one knows. Even on Reddit, the person responding to you telling you about your chances may be just another applicant who's probably in the same boat as you but if this helps i have shared my scores usce lors and stuff in this particular video you can use that for like a reference but please 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 understand that there is no gold standard application there are a lot of subjects
subjective factors involved so to put your best up forward learn from the mistakes that other people made and hope for amazing things to happen and the last mistake is not having anyone to speak to i can understand if you do not have a lot of friends who are in this path with you honestly this is very important because this whole process is so stressful you definitely need someone to speak to because it's very easy to feel like you're doing this all by yourself and you may find it very hard to push through sometimes so i have created a discord server for you guys so you're welcome to join that it has people who are preparing for step 1 step 2 match 2023 who are looking for research who are looking for usce so it's just like a place for people to to get the right information for creating like a very supportive space for people so i'll leave the link in the description for you to join another thing that you can do is join twitter because even twitter has like so much information and there are also these amazing doctors who host twitter spaces where people vent and share their stories and experiences about the match so you can check that out as well that's about it for this video if you have any other questions please let me know in the comments down below uh, and i'll try my best to get back to them as soon as i can thank you for watching and i'll see you next time